Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Um, so what I'm going to do today, um, I I was going through um, my previous uh, playlist for Platform Developer 1 Certification Series, which I did like, I remember in 20, early 2021, I presume. And I've noticed that Salesforce have added a few extra content uh, for you guys to know before you go ahead and appear for the certification like the one record trigger flow search solution basics um and yeah and a couple of here and there stuff right so i kind of realized that right you know it's important for me to keep this course up to date although i do appreciate that uh it's a free course you don't have to pay for it uh, but still right free doesn't mean you know the low content right the poor content it's i mean just because somebody is giving this stuff for free right and I, I find it sometimes very challenging to, to maintain uh, to the current level because, you know, as you know that I've done PD1, App Builder, uh, Sales Cloud, uh, so, sorry, Service Cloud, uh, CPQ, now I'm doing Experience Cloud. So I would highly appreciate if you notice a discrepancy, uh, please let me know and I'll, I can assure you that I'll build uh the missing content for you because obviously I want you guys to get the latest content when you go and uh, when you want to prepare for uh, your certification. Uh, I also forgot to mention I, I do have a course for PD2 as well. So you can see, right, there are lots of courses I'm giving for free, right? So it's kind of become a challenge for me to uh, to go and look and update it. But that being said, that that's that's not an excuse. I'm not I'm not pointing it out as an excuse. Uh, I, I take it as my responsibility that I've been a bit slack in, in, in doing that. So, and my apologies for that. I really didn't get a chance to uh, update a few of the contents. So I'm going through the content now and, and updating it. So I know that you guys uh, must be waiting for my new content on experience uh, cloud, but I wanted to, uh, fix what is in place already so that you know whoever wants to prepare for say pd1 or uh, service cloud they get the latest content okay so today what i'm going to do uh sorry digress and enough of ranting i guess uh i'm going to talk about the record trigger flow right this is a very popular topic and salesforce is pushing this a lot and this kind of uh reduce uh the need of writing an apex trigger Right. I'm not saying that Apex triggers are gone. They are still useful for a lot of scenarios. But that being said, right, if you're a functional consultant who's struggling to uh, write an Apex code, the record trigger flow will do the job. OK, now uh, I'm going to show you how record trigger flow works and I'm going to talk about the schedule flow as well. Um, so right now, you know, there are different flows, right? You might have seen the screen flows or the launch flows. And then we have a trigger flows. OK. Now, what is a record trigger flows? So the the name itself indicate you know will suggest you that you know the flow which get triggered by something, an action or an event. So it's it's specific to an object. Say for instance, uh, I wanted to do something on an opportunity object, right? And when something changes on the opportunity object, maybe or when something is created on the ob opportunity object, uh, an event get fired, and which is kind of captured by a flow, right? Um, so which is that is what a record trigger flow in general so maybe a change of a field value or maybe a creation of a, uh, a record inside an object or or something right so that is what a record trigger flow is all about um, so it is a pretty simple thing so you know you need a criteria and based on the criteria you need an action right so the, the first the three things the trigger right object uh, would have triggered this flow and then based on the criteria you know you need to perform certain action right so that's all uh, when it comes to your record trigger flow now uh, I will talk about uh, briefly about the schedule and the record um, even uh, the platform when I will talk about as well right it's a pretty pretty fantastic uh, option it's like a pub sub model which you can do using the flow uh, which is pretty cool. Okay, um, so these are the triggers which can uh, trigger the flow. <laughs> I mean, the record trigger flow. What when the record is created? Anytime a record is created, anytime this record is uh, created or updated, only when the record is deleted. Okay, 
So I've already created a flow um, just to explain uh, how it works. So, so you log into your org, right? You go to the setup uh, using this Gecko icon, and there's an option called flow here. Just type the flow and go to flow. If you're new to flow, right? So there's another video in the platform that one uh, I noticed, right? I built to explain what flow is all about. Um, so now I built a flow just to show you guys now, but I can find a flow. Okay, that's fine. No problem for that. So what I've done, right? I've created a scenario where on change of an account active status from yes to no, all the associated contact uh, with that specific account will lose the ownership of an account. So in simple terms, you, you go to an account record, you select an active field, change it to no, right? And behind the scene, the flow will uh, remove the account ID from the, the contact, right? So the contact will have no account ID. So that's the whole requirement is. Okay, now I built a flow, now I can't find it, right? So, which is not really great, right? So what I'll do, uh, the best way to find it, is there's another option. So obviously I know I built a flow on account because that's where the flow should be uh, uh, kicking in whenever something that changes on account field, right? So I'll go to an object manager and so I'll go to an account and I'll go to something called the flow trigger. This is a pretty handy option. Now you see, I already have a flow here. So I open this. It will open the flow which I built. Okay. So this is the best way you can find that the flows that's been used on this specific object. And I really love this option, right? Instead of you know figuring out by yourself, ah, oh, which flow is getting used where, so you can go to an object and see. And as you can see, that it's run after save. Okay. So this is a simple flow, very very simple flow. So what I'm doing is that, um, so I this is running. Uh, straight away so I will do here and I will edit so you create a flow and you start configuring it so I'm saying hey this flow should be triggered when something happens on account and only when the record is updated not when the record is created right and there's an entry condition the condition is that okay when the active status equals no okay only then the tr uh, this flow should be uh, uh, triggered yeah <clears throat> And and every time updater meets the condition. So and after that, what I'm doing that, okay. So when that happens, I'm getting a contact record. So I'm saying, hey, give me all the contacts associated with this specific account, right? And once that happens, I'm looping through the contact and I'm assigning uh, the account ID to you know to blank. Basically I'm I'm clearing off the account ID because you are saying, hey, this account is no longer active, so that specific contact will no longer associate with this account. That's all it is, right? And then I'm just updating it using a collection. That's all the flow does, right? I mean, there's a flow video. I talked about it, how the flow works. Just check it out. If you're uh, doing platform dev, you should know how flow works. It's important. Okay, so let's test it, okay? So I'll go to setup. Um, not set up, sorry. I find an account. And uh, I'll use this one. Okay. Now let me see if what's the status. So active true. Now let's go to the related list. Okay, so we got one contact, right? So what should happen when I change uh, the active to no? The contact should disappear, right? I mean, not to delete it, but because it loses the ownership. Okay. All right. Now let's see the related list. You see the contact is gone. It's pretty simple, right? So that's how a record trigger works, right? Because I'm triggering a flow based on an activity that's happening on an account object. That's very simple. Now there is another flow uh, which is called uh, a schedule flow okay so you can uh, trigger a schedule flow with when the when something happens on an object 
or when the object get created or when the object get updated that is very well possible so instead of run immediately right so you can do add schedule path so in that you know you can select the time when account is updated or when so let's say when account it's created right and offset number whenever you want it to run an offset option so you can say a one minute something right so uh, and then you can trigger this uh, flow and then you can add the logic under that flow so now you must be wondering under what scenario I should be using this right so the one scenario which I recently built is when you wanted to call uh, an external API right so what I was doing was that uh, based on uh, a creation of a record in an object I need to fire an external service uh, to do certain function uh, operation behind the scene so if you, you cannot do a call out if you're not using on, on a straight record trigger it will complain okay so you need to create a schedule flow uh, you know a schedule file and to maybe say hey whenever uh, a record is created a minute after you you trigger that API to do whatever you're supposed to do so that's one of the example the real use case scenario uh, I can tell you that where you can use the schedule flow right um, and then another one I wanted to talk about the platform events right so the platform events it's kind of work like a pop sub model right the flow can act as a subscriber or can act as a publisher okay let's let me give you an example now let's say you know based you you're receiving an entry uh, from an external endpoint right and that external endpoint is creating a record you know within a specific custom object and this as soon as the record is created uh, you want to fire a platform event okay a different platform event. let's say you have four platform event based on different scenario so you so you get say a record which has specific value you you behind the scene you massage your data or you transform your data whichever way you say you transform the data like you have in the Moolsoft right basically in the Moolsoft you transform the data uh, sorry, I don't want it to talk about Moolsoft. Might confuse you if you don't know what Moolsoft is about. But you transform your data. Okay, you're getting a data in certain format. You you know do whatever logic you wanted to put on the data, and then you create a platform event uh, and publish it, right? And then you get another form of data which has different value or different meaning, and you pass it to a separate platform event. Okay, so now. Um, what do you what exactly you're doing is that you're you're publishing different platform events now as a flow you can subscribe to those platform event right so in a in a kind of a record trigger flow you can subscribe to uh you know platform event uh, or yeah so so the platform flow can act as a subscriber uh and when that when the flow gets subscribed to the event so whenever event get published the flow picks it up and do whatever stuff they want to do i mean uh from an example point of view you don't really much have to worry about a pub sub model that's more like an architecture integration architecture uh related question but but if you're a developer i really expect that at least you should have some basic understanding right i mean i've, I've talked about platform event uh in detail explaining how you can create a platform and how you can subscribe it using a trigger uh, in one of the videos and I, uh, I will highly encourage you to study that uh, before you go and appear for the platform dev one um, platform dev one is one of my favorite certification right I mean because it, you can do a lot of things and I do understand that if you're coming from a functional background you might be intimidated when you look at the code um, you know you might try to use the local route but even if you're trying to use the local route you should still understand uh you sh should uh understand um the implications of the performance right because you cannot build a flow uh, without considering bulkification into mind because otherwise what will happen the flow started to crank right and it started to show all kind of performance issue when you get a huge uh volume of data so you have to think from uh, that point, right? When you're building a flow, it's like writing a code, right? There's no much difference. It's the only difference is that it's all drag and drop, right? It's like uh, uh, there is an app, 
um, uh, my daughter she plays on it that's just that's a scratch that you can build the stuff on it it's pretty cool so floor reminds me of that so so that being said uh that's pretty much i wanted to cover um i hope you enjoyed this session uh and thank you very much for watching